Thanks for clicking on to the part two of the 46th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. I thought in the previous video I explained quite a lot of things, but I wanted to kind of actually summarize a little bit about what I was speaking about. Possibly even try and kind of explain a little bit more about the mechanisms that I was talking about before. So of course we've got the El Nino taking place. How is the El Nino developing? What actually takes place? How do we get there? What's neutral conditions versus La Nina versus El Nino? Well, it's all to do with the easterly trade winds, of course, and the strength of the subtropical high to the north over the subtropical belt. We've got two areas of subtropical high pressure, one in the north and one in the south. What happens is under normal cir circumstances, we have got easterly trade winds that circulate around the subtropical high and those winds uh, blow from east to west in the northern hemisphere, west to east in the southern hemisphere. Uh, with no normal conditions, we see a push of warmest waters towards the western portion of the Pacific. When those trade winds are very strong and over a prolonged period of time, what happens is we get an upwelling of waters, cold waters from deep below the surface that develops a cold pool. And that is what we've seen in the last three years with La Nina conditions. El Nino conditions are quite the opposite. We get a reduction to even a complete collapse of the trade winds, which therefore allows warm water to build over the eastern and central portion of the Pacific. That is essentially what we are starting to see now. But we do have a slowdown in the development of this warming over the eastern Pacific because of trade winds blowing across the ocean surface. What we've got is the Madden Julian Oscillation has a strong pulse over the Indonesia region, western portion of the Pacific. That is forcing the air to travel towards this pulse and therefore we're not seeing a strengthening of the El Nino at this moment in time. But as we start to lose the strength of this magnet, the Madden Julian Oscillation pulse over the western Pacific we will start to see a reduction of the easterly trade winds again, and we will continue to see the onset, the development, the maturing of the El Nino as we progress through autumn and into the winter. It's typically the winter time that we see the, um, the El Nino peak in intensity. Why is the Atlantic so warm? Part of the reason, I think, the reason why we've seen such strong warming of the Atlantic Ocean, almost the non-existence, of the typical cool canary current that flows southwards down the western side of northwest Africa is possibly down to the lack of subtropical high pressure during the autumn and early portion of this winter uh, summer season. Sorry, the strength of the high has been focused over the north. A weaker um, version of the high pressure has been further south, and therefore this strong warming. Uh, Initially to the west of the UK has been down to a persistent area of high pressure that has allowed a lack of wind uh, more in the way of sunshine and therefore a heating of the surface. Further south, typically with a subtropical high building northwards with the sun moving, uh, you, know, uh, you know, with the strengthening of the sun angle further north, that area of subtropical high pressure follows that. What we've seen is a lack of high pressure over this region with wind circulating around the high and allowing the surface waters to cool through upwelling. The lack of high pressure, therefore the lack of easterly trade winds, I think has been one of the reasons that we've seen such strong warming, unusually strong warming, over this region of the Atlantic Ocean. So I think personally speaking, the uh, strength of the high unusually far north has allowed the waters in the far north to heat up but also the lack of high pressure further south where you would typically see it we have not seen the waters upwell through the easterly trade winds blowing of course from Africa out over the Atlantic and cooling the waters down that is personally my explanation as to why are part of the reason why we've seen such incredible warming because I've even been scratching my head myself why is the Atlantic so warm at the moment of course, when you revert to the Indian Ocean, typically El Nino conditions enhance drought over Australia, Indonesia, up into Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, 
and even decreases the Indian monsoon. Usually, you've got stronger cooling in this region of the world here surrounding Indonesia. The Walker Sail uh, essentially is where we've got, of course, a rever normal conditions. You've got the, the, when the air rising in the western portion of the Pacific. That then lifts up through the column and then uh, runs from west back to east over the upper atmosphere and back down uh, into the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean. That is known as the Walker Cell or Walker Circulation. The opposite takes place with El Nino conditions where you've got rising there in the eastern portion of the Pacific. It rises through the column. It then uh, migrates westwards and descends over the cool waters of the western portion of the Pacific Ocean Basin. I hope this is clear. I hope this is understandable. I thought instead of explaining you know, beforehand what's taking place, I thought I better go back to basics and explain what's going on in the first place. So I do apologize for that. What what typically happens is we get a reduction of the of the Indian Ocean uh, Indian uh, monsoon season, uh, a, a decrease in winds coming up from an area of high pressure that is typically present to the east of Madagascar ca called the Mascarene High. The stronger the Mascarene High, the stronger the winds are going to be coming up uh, around this area of high pressure. And of course, thanks to the Coriolis effect or Coriolis effect. These winds bend to the east of Ethiopia and uh, towards India uh, overall. Heating of the land then uh, attracts those moist winds coming in from a southwesterly direction and that enhances rainfall over India. At the moment, we've actually got IOD neutral conditions or Indian Ocean Dipole neutral, which means we've got, still got plenty of warm weather further east. We've not got this strong cooling here versus strong warming to the west, enhances rain in eastern Africa, decreases rainfall in Australia and Indonesia. What we're seeing is here, folks, we are seeing um, a tempered El Nino effect. We're not really see we're almost still seeing La Nina conditions as opposed to El Nino conditions. And therefore, we have got positive news when it comes to India and the monsoon. So this is the, the CFSV2 accumulated precipitation anomaly. This is over India, so we've got a lot of dry conditions, very hot conditions in central India. Wetter across the north, thanks to the cyclone that recently moved through. And we've got a wetter south. You notice here in week two, we enhance the winds and we've got more progression of those southwesterly monsoon winds across more of the subcontinent of India. So we're going to increase the rainfall and it should be a good week ahead for India and the monsoon uh, uh, progression northwards. You can even see here week three. So this takes out the period 2nd through the 9th of July. We've still got wetter than average conditions, mainly across the north, slightly drier across the southeast. Up that west coast, we've got some very wet conditions here. So it's, it's looking favorable in terms of wet conditions in this region of the world. So I hope that explains a little bit more with regards to why we're seeing uh, what we're seeing and also an ex explanation as to what happened, you know, what's going on. Uh, you know, from the previous video, this explains a little bit more of the overall dynamics in place. So the Indian monsoon typically with El Nino conditions is weaker and we see more in the way of drought. But with that warm water still over... Uh, this region of the world, if we can get back to the right chart, but these warm waters here over uh, and further east means that we're, uh, and also the Manjulian Oscillation being over this region as well, we are actually enhancing rainfall in this region of the world. So we're still seeing almost uh, La Nina uh, type conditions despite the developing El Nino. But eventually, as we progress through the year, drought will probably become more of an issue. Australia, Indonesia, Southeast Asia. And drier conditions that should start to develop over India as well with time. Eventually, we will cool things down more here over the Western Pacific, strengthening the warmth over the east. And we'll see what happens as we go forward here. Very interesting stuff, of course. And let's have a very quick look and see what's been going on around the world. So on June 15th, this is off uh, uh, Thierry Goose's uh, Twitter feed. Uh, June 15th was the first day with no snow on the ground. At Donner Pass so that's pretty incredible considering we are now in the middle portion of summer's first meteorological month and the snow has only now just uh, begun to, 
to completely disappear. Now, those super warm waters over the equatorial Pacific is enhancing uh, along with the uh, up, upward motion triggered by the Manjulian oscillation. It looks as if we are seeing a feature that has a high probability of developing over the uh, uh, the equatorial uh, Atlantic Ocean. And what that is, is a very unusual situation to see such a, a development uh, during the month of June. You typically have waters just far too cold to support tropical cyclone activity until August, September and October. That's when usually the threshold is met and you increase the uh, the, the intertropical convergence zone, of course, with the, the time of the year. But a, a very unusual situation developing an, an African easterly wave development at this time of the year, probably a, a record for the earliest development if that was to occur. And of course, the National Hurricane Center has a, a 70% 70, 70 chance of that development. Jason Nichols, both the latest um, APEC multi-model ensemble and the WMO multi-model ensemble showing El Nino conditions strengthening over the next few months. Uh, so we are going to have at least a moderate possibly a strong El Nino by the time we reach the autumn season and whatnot. It impacts again on the UK is going to be interesting. I have said for a second half of the summer being a lot wetter than the first half. It just depends on, on so many different factors, El Nino being one of them, the warm sea surface temperatures being another. We also have to factor in uh, the Manjulian oscillation and what that does during the July-August period. So it's all to play for when it comes to certain things. We've seen the first 40 of the year in Europe recent days at uh, Al Monte in Spain. So a bit of a delay in terms of the first 40 Celsius, of course. Uh, we had, like I said in the previous video, record-breaking warmth, 27.9 Celsius uh, and 27.8 Celsius. Yesterday, the highest temperatures ever recorded in the country before the 21st of June, away up in Iceland. Remember how cool it was over the winter season and even in the spring season? Remarkable stuff. The record being 30.5 recorded back in 1939. Incredibly warm temperatures. The central England temperature, of course. You know, we've had, uh, what, seven days of 28 Celsius or above somewhere in the UK. Uh, pretty impressive stuff, actually. Um, so, yeah, very interesting stuff. Massive lightning strike struck the Eiffel Tower the early hours of, I believe, this morning. And an amazing capture here, as you can see. Um, and uh, we've had record breaking temperatures, 35 Celsius in parts of Japan in recent days. Kilkenny weather put this amazing tweet out. There was a total of 34.7 millimeters of rain this morning, making it easily the wettest day of the year and our wettest June day since the 7th of June, 2012 when 41.4 millimetres of rain fell. So, of course, flash flooding in the Kilkenny area of Ireland in recent days. Look at this football pitch completely submerged. There's no football being played in that pitch uh, anytime soon. Uh, so thanks to Kilkenny Weather for that uh, very interesting tweet, of course. We had record warm temperatures, by the way, at high altitudes uh, in Antarctica. We've had, of course, temperatures as high as 15 to 17 Celsius above average. Also record breaking temperatures. This has just been a theme, of course. 40 Celsius at 1800 meters above sea level. We've had the near record breaking temperatures for the 2000 meter level. Near world records, I think by a couple of degrees, within a couple of degrees, sorry, of the world record for temperature. Incredible heat, especially eastern portions of India where we're seeing the delay in the monsoon. That should change in the coming days, of course. But not only daytime temperatures, but nighttime temperatures, including Calcutta, uh, where minimum temperatures were recorded of 32 to 33 Celsius. Can you imagine that kind of temperature during the overnight period? Probably no lower than the upper 30s, uh, like at midnight. So incredible stuff. Also record uh, warm temperature, uh, record cold temperatures, sorry, in parts of uh, the tropics, the Am Amazon uh, Basin. Uh, temperatures reading um, only a high of 18.7 at latitude of 4 south of the equator. Incredible stuff. Uh, this was the May temperature, anomaly's third warmest on record. Uh, we've also got, um, according to the JMA, that was NASA, 
uh, seeing the warmest temperatures. I've run out of time, unfortunately. That's it for today. Hope you have enjoyed.